As I understand it, after Vatican II, Paul VI, who was arguably a little naive about the communists, he was pressuring Franco to renounce the, the I think it was the rights of the Spanish crown to mm -hmm. confirm bishops, something like that, where um, the, the secular power had the right to uh, cooperate in the appointment of bishops. And this is very traditional. This goes back centuries and centuries and centuries yeah. that, that secular the so-called secular, meaning the temporal lay power of rulers, was confirming and cooperating to a degree. The emperor, the Holy Roman Emperor, could actually veto the Pope, for example, yeah. as he did in the in the 1903 or four uh, conclave. Um, yeah. So, as I understand it, Paul VI pressured Franco to renounce this, which, as I understand it, he did to obey the Pope because he was trying to be a pious Catholic, and. Uh, also allow more freedom of religion to the non-Catholics in Spain, the, specifically the Protestants. And as a result of this, at least the argument goes, there was a lot of Marxist, uh, Marxist friendly bishops, but definitely Marxist clergy who actually led the, the, the post Vatican II Marxism in Spain. It was led by clergy, according to uh, Stanley Payne and David, David Wimpoff. So how Man. do you interpret the, how do you interpret the post Vatican II Spanish history? You just, I mean, you just hit the, you know, the nail on the head. I mean, that's exactly what happened, at least in my estimation. It, the first wave of Marxism came through the educational system. You know, that's a warning shot for us. The second one came actually through the clergy in Spain after the 60s. And it's no coincidence that the, after Vatican II, and again, I'm very careful the way I try to phrase this, because I don't want to give the impression, I really reject and abhor the idea, the notion that Vatican II is the reason why we have the uh, fallout in the church and all this debacle, because I think it's a very reductionist, very simplistic argument with all due respect for those who don't subscribe to that, because well, uh, Protestants also have seen all uh, uh, the backbone of their faith, Jews and Mohammedans too. But it's, we're, it's not exclusively of Catholics. It's just more noticeable on us, obviously, because we're a bigger target anyway. But it actually, you know, my, my I, I just ask and plead to like, let's expand this view a little bit more. Let's question it deeper. What happened, at least in the Western world, and I'm sure in the Eastern world, have had their own issues. Uh, during the 60s, what, what is it that made us as a whole society exchange the transcendental view, something bigger than ourselves, exchange it for some materialistic view? I don't understand. It's a mystery to me. In this particular case, back to the original point with Spain, I, I just don't understand how is it that Franco went from being a defender of the faith and then after Vatican II, and I'll specify what my stance in Vatican II is, it's the opposite. Like it was an antagonistic relationship, and also the priests now are doing the function that the teachers did. You know, sixty years earlier than you know before them. You know, uh, 50, 60 years before them, and now Marxism is infiltrating through the priesthood in the communities. And it was actually the priests who were leading the reforms in Spain, the liberal reforms in the seventies, that once Franco uh, passed out and all that took hold of Spain. The there is a constant theme of conflict in the Spanish society with liberals trying to change society in Spain. For example, early in the 20th century, when the Republicans funded by the Marxists, like I mentioned before, were trying to get hold of it, the king was Alfonso the uh, Thirteenth, El Rey Alfonso. And King Alfonso, by the way, was the guy who consecrated Spain to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Spain has been consecrated like three times. He was the last one. In all, and an ironic point is King Alfonso ended up consecrating Spain, but he ended up exiled, self-exiled, sure, but he ended up being exiled from Spain because then when the Republicans took over, you know, his head was on the line. He said, well, I got to go before this, uh, you know, broils into a bigger conflict. But anyway, with King Alfonso, this is documented, actually. You have the Masonic lodges there who were pushing for King Alfonso to legalize uh, divorce, you know, to make it okay to be divorced and uh, diversity of religion and all that kind of stuff. And King Alfonso refused. And when King Alfonso was going to consecrate Spain, they warned him is you may consecrate Spain, but you will not stay in the kingdom. And obviously they meant business because he consecrated Spain, but he was, he had to run for his life. So what, we see what this year was that consecration. 
uh, 1919, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong, please correct me if I'm okay. wrong in the dates, uh, the consecration of the Sacred Heart of Jesus of Spain. Um, needless to say, King Alfonso was not, no, was not necessarily a pious man, okay? That, that, let's just clarify that. I'm not trying to lie on ice him or anything like that. Um, so when that happened, not too long after it, you know, he had to run, you know, just, you know, run for his life, and the monarchy was done not too long after him. Well, you have this constant tension between, you know, Marxists trying to change society. And one of the key themes that Marxists want to do, like I mentioned before, is the first thing is we got to get rid of any concept of transcendental. Same thing you see in America is one of the first things the liberal ones is we want to make sure they understand that there's no thing bigger than ourselves. You know, we're it. In this case, for us, it's technocrats more than actually, you know, Marxists. But it's the same thing. Technocrats nowadays, most of them are working for the Marxist agenda, you know, all this. So that this just ends up in the same place. Well, now when Franco, uh, the second part of the legacy after Vatican II, the relationship with the church was definitely sour, uh, not as good. And part of it was because a lot of priesthood, I don't want to say everybody or even most, but a big chunk of the priesthood and the clergy in Spain became highly, highly liberalized and introduced Marxism. Uh, the Jesuits obviously being at the front line of this in Spain, uh, among other places. Uh, the area of the Basque country, also my people, you know, the, I come from Basque stock, we became also very uh, liberal, the clergy over there. Uh, but also this is the time we, we have uh, Our Lady of Garabandal, which I know is not necessarily an approved apparition, but also warning about those things in Garabandal, you know, the, uh, the apparitions of Our Lady there, warning about this thing going on and prophecy and whatnot.